Let's try another example. This time we'll work with the cubic function. Uh, we're going from minus 1 to 5. Same setup as last time, right? So first thing we do is construct our partition. So delta x is going to be 5 subtract minus 1 over n. 6 over n, okay? x i. Well, let's do um, i plus 1, because we, we're interested in right endpoints, right? So it's going to be x1 plus i times delta x. So x1 is minus 1 plus i times delta x. Okay? Now we got to plug that into our function, right? So our function is going to be what? x cubed. So f of xi plus 1 is minus 1 plus i times delta x. And we've got to cube the whole thing, right? We're cubing a binomial. Got to be careful about that. If you remember your binomial theorem, you might be able to just write this all out in one go. So minus 1 cubed is minus 1 plus 3 times minus 1 squared, which is plus 1, times i, times delta x, plus 3 times minus 1, so it's minus 3, times i squared, delta x squared, and then finally, i cubed, delta x cubed. All right, it's going to be a good opportunity for us to remember all of our summation formulas, right? So there's our f of x i plus 1. Good thing we're not doing the left endpoints here. This would be even worse, right? We'd have an i minus 1 in there, there, and there. We still have to multiply those out. Yeah. There's a reason why people usually prefer to do the right endpoints um, in this setup, right? Uh, by the way, uh, some people do set up their, their numbering a little bit differently. Some people will start their numbering at 0 and go to n, and, and then you probably prefer the left endpoints. But the way we've set up our numbering, yeah, right endpoints are a little bit easier. So we come over here, we say, what's our integral? Minus 1 to 5 x cubed dx is going to be, well, it's going to be approximately the sum i going from 1 to n of f of xi plus 1 this whole business here, 3i squared delta x squared plus i cubed delta x cubed times one more delta x, okay? So what does that get me? Minus delta x times the sum i going from 1 to n of 1 plus 3 delta x squared times the sum i going from 1 to n of i minus 3 delta x cubed sum i going from 1 to n i squared and then finally delta x to the 4 times the sum i going from 1 to n of i cubed. Four terms to deal with. Let's put them together and let's put in our delta x's, right? So minus 6 over n times n, right? Plus 3 times 6 squared over n squared times n times n plus 1 over 2 minus 3 times 6 cubed over n cubed times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. And finally, 6 to the fourth power 
over n to the fourth times n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4. Now we try to clean this up. So we have minus 6 from that first term, right? Cancel the n's. Come over here. Cancel that. Um, the n plus 1 over n that you're left with, let's write that as 1 plus 1 over n. And what are our numbers that are le we, we have left? Uh, 3 times 6 times 6 over 2. So 6. So we have 36 over 2 is 18. 3 times 18, uh, 54. All right, make sure I got that right. I think that's good. These numbers are going to start causing trouble for me. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the best that we can. Get rid of one of those. Uh, get rid of one of those. That's kind of nice. Um, so 36 times 3 um, is 108. Okay, and then I've got 1 plus 1 over n, and then 2 plus 1 over n. So what I've done there, um, all right, there's two of these left. So if we, if we kind of cancel one, we put the other ones, we'll put one, one there, one there, and then n plus 1 over n comes 1 plus 1 over n, right? N. Divide each by n. 2n over n is 2 plus 1 over n. Okay, last one. Um, Two of those cancel. We have 1 plus 1 over n, and that whole thing is going to be squared, right? Because I have this, really what I have here is I have this squared over that squared, but I could write that as the whole thing squared, and so I really get that squared. Okay, we can do that again. And there's, there's this number out front we have to deal with. That's the, that's the bit I'm a little bit worried about. Um, 6 to the 4 over 4. Uh, so 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 over 2 times 2 is 3 times 3 times 6 times 6. Um, so that's 108. Uh, so this is going to be 324. Okay, I'm not going to try to simplify that. <laughs> you, you can, you can if you want, okay? But there's an answer. Now, now the last thing you might want to do is we say this. What about if uh, n goes to infinity, right? Uh, if we let the number of rectangles become arbitrarily large, what kind of value are we getting? We expect that the approximation should become exact as n goes to infinity. Um, so we get minus 6 plus 54, because that's going to go to 0, minus 108 times 1 plus 0 times 2 plus 0, so times 2. So minus 216. And then plus 324. Um, okay, so this is 108, this is 48, so overall I get 156 as the value of this integral.